everyone, today on Bella Ranavare, we are gonna be making over this little dresser, this little chest. Stay tuned. All right, everybody, so this piece didn't go quite as I planned it to be, but I want you to stay tuned because I wanna show you that even though we make mistakes sometimes on pieces, it's not the end all be all. So I want to show you how I got this look right here. This is the glass bead. There's a little bit of an invisible stencil that you can see. And so stay tuned and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I did this. Okay, everybody. So in the spirit of being transparent, I had started this piece and it is not turning out how I wanted. There were some metal pieces that I couldn't quite get off and it just wasn't working the way I wanted it to. So I ended up prying these off. I ended up scraping back the bead gel. I'm gonna sand this down. I gotta fill some holes and we're gonna work from scratch. It happens. This is how you learn by making mistakes. Here we are now. <laughs> I have sanded this entire piece down and we're gonna rework it. So I ordered some new glass bead texture gel. And so I'm going to go a different route. I cut some of the stencil, where is it? Okay, so we're gonna go a different route. So the stencil, I cut it to fit. And so there was like a little floral at the top and I cut that off and then I cut this in half so that this would fit like this on the drawers. And I think I'm gonna go over the very top drawer. So I'm gonna blend this, we'll go over that. But then I'm gonna do the glass bead gel with this stencil after we've blended it, but when I had that metal on there, I wasn't able to set that flat. So now I pried the metal off, fixed the holes. I just, my mind was not straight when I was working on it before, but I've taken like a week off and I feel confident in going back in this. So, you know, one thing I want to say is if you're an artist and you're feeling just stressed out and you're feeling like you need a break, take a break. So what I decided to do is I'm going to do this design all the way across on the top drawer. And then what we'll do is we'll decide if it looks good or if we just want to do the top drawer or if we think that it would look good on the rest of them. So I know this video is a little like walks you through how I've started something and then messed up changed my mind and now we're changing it again so really the main focus of this is you're gonna you're gonna learn stuff in this video but the main focus of this video is to show you that we do make mistakes and if you are painting something you make mistakes although it's frustrating because I was pretty far into the process it's not the end of the world so like I said we're gonna rework this piece and you're gonna do it with me and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do it so let's rework this piece Okay, everybody, so we're gonna blend this drawer right here. So you can see right here, it's still drying, but what I did is I used In the Navy, and then I used Muscadine Wine. We're looking for some rich colors, but they're calming as well. So I'm gonna show you how to do this blend on here. The first thing that you're gonna need is In the Navy. And you're also gonna need Muscadine Wine. I have a brush for each color. So this is the Dixie Belle Mini, this is Dixie Belle Angled, Mini Angled, and then I have a neutral brush. This is the Dixie Belle Mini, and this neutral brush will be for me to feather and do some finalizing. And then you also want a mister bottle. I also have paper towels, and we're gonna start. So the first thing when I blend that I do is put a base coat down. 
So when I first started blending, I didn't put a base coat down and I would just start blending right away. Well, I've changed that. There's two reasons why you want to blend, or there's two reasons why you wanna put a base coat down. One, if you overwork your paint on your first coat, you're just gonna, this finish is gonna keep showing through and it's frustrating. Two, when you put down a base coat of your paint, it allows you to see where your blend is gonna be. And so you can tell if you're gonna like it or not before you do all the work of blending, that makes sense. So the first thing we're doing is putting a base coat down. And I'm gonna go around the edges on this. And I have this drawer pulled out. Okay, so I'm going around this with the, in the navy. Now the center is gonna be my muscadine wine. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on there. It's okay if they overlap. We're gonna blend them anyways. This is just gonna be our base coat. So once I apply this, we're gonna allow this to dry. You don't have to blend it right away, but if you get a chance to do a little bit of blending, you can. Don't overwork it. Like I said, this is just the base coat, but if you, I'm just smoothing out that finish. So what we're gonna do is allow this to dry and then we will come back and blend. Okay, so we are back, it's dry. And what I'm gonna do is I, I put on a thin second coat just to have something to work with. Or if you've got a lighter color and it needs a second coat because it hasn't had that good of coverage, then that's when you would put your second coat. So I'm just, I, these colors covered really well, so I'm just putting a skim coat on here. And we're gonna do a skim coat of both colors. Okay, now this is what we're gonna do. You want to make sure that your surface has enough moisture that it will blend together, but not so much that it is dripping down. Okay, so that is where these mister bottles come in really handy. And so I'm going to mist over the top right here and we're gonna start at that top part. Sometimes drawer fronts are tricky because it's a bigger space than some smaller areas. So I'm gonna show you how I work that. So I'm gonna start up here, I put a just, I put a little bit of paint, okay, not a ton. Again, we're gonna mist that top just to make sure that it's nice and it's got that moisture. We're gonna start up here and we're gonna go up, work our way into this muscadine wine. And you wanna use light flicks, okay, long, and you can go vertical. And this is really not much different than most of my blending videos. You're gonna go in a circular motion. Okay. Now we're going to work, work our way around. So we're gonna do the side right here. So do a little bit of paint, make sure it's moist, put it on there, do a circle. Okay. These colors are fairly dark too. We're gonna to do the bottom. So we're gonna make sure that's misted. Go like this. I need a little bit more paint. Okay, we're doing circles, missed it. You can always add more water. You can't take the water away unless you wipe it off with a rag. So just be cognizant of that. Now we're gonna do the side. We're gonna mist it, do this. Okay, now we're going to work the center. So I'm going to take my muscadine wine and I'm actually gonna put a little bit more on that brush, not a ton, and I'm going to pull it like this in the center, okay? First and foremost, then I'm gonna mist it and I'm actually gonna go around in a circle, around in that little rectangle, oval, whatever this is with muscadine wine, okay? So I went in the circles. Now I'm gonna go like this horizontally, lightly, lightly, lightly. Mist it if you need to, horizontally. Okay, I'm gonna go vertically. All right, now I'm going to go back around with my In the Navy and I'm going to just really continue that process. I'm gonna go diagonal. So for this piece, I really want 
that muscadine wine, as you can see down here, it's very, I want it to be subtle. I don't want it to be boom, there's some red. So I'm just, I'm going to go over this with my In the Navy brush, just to kind of mute that down so you can see it, but it's not like, oh wow, there's red on there. Okay, so I'm going diagonal. Now, remember I said you need a neutral brush. So here's my neutral brush. What I'm gonna do is make sure that this is misted. It's pretty dry here, so that's why I'm continuously misting it. And I'm just going to do long strokes. Obviously the vertical ones are not as long as the horizontal ones because this dresser drawer is not. I'm going to kind of step back and look. I want this blended a little bit better. So I'm gonna do some circles, okay? Do some circles up here. Do circles all around with this circle, circle, circle. Blend it again. And a lot of times you need to step back. So you'll need to step back and kind of assess it and look at it after you're done to make sure that it looks like what you want to. So that's the problem with blending a lot of times is we overwork it while it's still wet and we forget that it's gonna look a little bit different once it's dry. So I'm gonna step back and I'm gonna see what it looks like. What I really want is just maybe like a little bit more red. So like this red right here, I want that to be, that's gonna be brighter, which is totally fine. And then I just want a shadow of red almost really was what we're looking for and then the in the navy around it. So I don't want something that's boom in your face because I am gonna be working with stencils on this top drawer and putting it over that. So this is not my main focus anyways. Okay, so now that I'm done blending, we're gonna do the stencil. And what I did is I measured the center of this drawer. And so we're gonna start from the center and work our way out. And so I'm gonna tape this. So I'm actually going to take painter's tape and tape around the stencil and any, this will, protect any spaces right here or like the stencil stops right here. So I'm gonna put it up against there so that when I do put this bead, glass bead on here, it will be nice and neat. This also keeps my stencil in place. Okay, so my tape is in place. Okay, so this is the Galleria glass bead texture and it actually has a neat little thing right here where I can pour it in and so that's what I'm gonna do because I'm going to rub it on there or I'm gonna scrape it across I'm gonna smooth it across with my plastic scraper so I'm going to just pour a little in here now it comes out white but it's gonna when it dries it's gonna be clear and you're gonna see those beads okay so I got down eye level so you could see so I'm gonna put take a little bit of this and I'm going to scrape it across. You can hear that it's gritty. So you wanna make sure you start at one end and just scrape it across. Okay, so I wanna show you this one last little part. What I like to do is again, flatten it and kind of pull it across just so I spread it and I maximize the use of this. So I'm going to spread it across these couple little areas. And then I've got, I can tell I've got extra and I just need to cover these little parts right here. So it's definitely something that is much different than what you would be used to. But you spread it like that and then what I do is, let's back up. I am going to carefully remove the tape. I'm gonna carefully remove this tape and I hold my fingers down on the stencil. 
I'm going to pull that tape up, put my finger on the stencil, kind of follow the tape with your finger. That way it doesn't pull up too soon. Sorry if my arm's in the way. Okay, if you get some on here like this, you can just wipe it off with a towel, it's not a big deal. So I'm gonna take one corner of this stencil, just take this bottom corner, now let's take this top corner, and I'm going to pull it up. And there you go. And it's beautiful. So now when it dries, it's going to be clear and have sparkly. Now, in order to get a really good stencil each time, you're gonna want to go and clean this each time. Clean it, dry it, and then replace it down in the next place that you want it. I wish I was above the center of attention, but I'm not. I wish I didn't have to give in to the pressure, uh oh. I'm posting pictures, trying to be someone I'm not. It feels just like I'm lying to you. I fake it, stage it, trying to live some perfect life. I know I'm wasting time. Cause I just want to call my friends and see what they're doing tonight. It doesn't have to be so special. I try to be myself, you do the same and we'll be alright. Start a conversation with someone Just be who I am, I care so much about first impressions Cause I got a feeling that it could be great Skip all the acts, not playing games Maybe ripping it, they me and tell you my name Yeah, I got a feeling that it could be great Skip all the acts, not playing games No more concern if they run me, I won't be ashamed Cause I just wanna call So, so far we have done the ray stencil, we did the blending, I haven't done the top. I did, however, put the new hardware on, but I'm going to take it off. So I wanna show you something. I don't know if you can really see this. It's almost like an invisible stencil. Do you see the mandala stencil right here? All I did is I used a stencil and I used the Dixie Bell gloss clear coat. And so I'm gonna show you how I did that because I wanted this on here to add character, but I didn't want it to be boom in your face. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. I'll pull this drawer out and we'll remove the hardware, but I wanna show you, it was a Waverly stencil, okay? And here it is, I cut it. So here's one half of it, it's clear, but here's one half of it. And then, so I cut it down the middle and then I also cut that into two sections because what I'm gonna do is just do it right here in the corners of the pieces and I wanted to make sure that it would fit. So that's why we need to move, remove the hardware so that way it will sit flat. Okay, so here we go. So I took the hardware off, I'm gonna push that this way. I've already done easy peasy spray wax on here. And so now what I'm gonna do is I want it to sit like this, okay? But I'm going to need to make sure that this right here doesn't bleed through. So I'm going to have to tape this. So I'm gonna tape this down first because that's the easier part. So these parts don't have the stencil to them. Now it's gonna be kind of tricky. Actually, hold on. There we go. I'm gonna make sure it's sitting flat. It was kind of butting up against it and pushing up. Okay, there we go. All right, so now that I have taped this part down, the next step is to make sure that we put tape along this little lip right here, and that way there's no bleed. So 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure, okay, so this is about a few centimeters, so I'm going to kind of put it over top of it and then I'm going to push it in. And what this is gonna do is it's going to help with that edge while still maintaining the stencil. And I wanna show you, so if you have any areas that like this right here, that's the corner, you push it into there. But like right here, there might be a little spot. So you can always take a small piece of tape and just kind of oops, set it on top. And use your fingernail and push it down. Okay. What you want to make sure is that the edge of that stencil is covered. So there's like one little spot right here where the edge of the stencil is not covered. There you go. So I don't know if you guys can see that. See how there's a nice line right here? And that way there won't be any bleed through and it'll just show this cool little stencil. So I'm gonna tape this part and then I'll show you how to do the stencil. So now I have my gloss clear coat and I'm gonna set it on plastic right here because I am messy. So I'm setting it on top there, but it's, it's covered by plastic. So it's not gonna get on my drawer. I have a round, I have a round small by Dixie Belle, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, if you can see it, I'm just gonna dip it a little bit in there and rub it off, okay? So there's, it's not dripping or anything like that. So I'm gonna dip it a little bit in there, rub it off. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this stencil down and I'm just gonna kinda of tap. And I'm holding the stencil down while I'm tapping. So that way we don't get any of the clear coat that goes underneath the stencil. At least we hope it doesn't. You don't want a ton of clear coat on there because you don't want it running underneath the stencil. Don't worry about the bubbles. Those will go away. It's not a big deal. see what it looks like and there you go so once this dries it's gonna be glossy and it's gonna be kind of like just you're not gonna you'll see it but you it'll be kind of invisible I guess is the word that's not really the word for it because it's not visible but it's gonna be glossy and so it'll be a nice little thing against the paint Thank <laughs> you.
right guys, that's it. And so thank you guys so much for watching. If you are not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell and you'll get all the latest videos. I usually try to do one each week. I'm going to try to put more content out, one being a piece of furniture and then maybe a technique. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching again. Everything I use is in the description below. You just click on those links and it'll take you right there so that you can purchase it if you choose to. So thank you guys so much and I will see you later. Happy creating.